Good afternoon, everyone. I'm John Carson, the director of the Office of Public Engagement here at the White House. We're here to talk about the American Jobs Act, answer your questions. And to do that today, we have with us Brian Deese, a senior member of the team at the National Economic Council. Uh, Brian, why don't you start things off with just a brief overview, and then we'll get right into questions. Great. Thanks, John. Uh, and thanks to all of you uh, for tuning in. Uh, as uh, John said, the focus of our discussion here uh, today and the focus of all of our activities here at the White House right now is on the American Jobs Act. Uh, it's a package of proposals that the President uh, laid out last week that would jumpstart economic growth and help boost job growth uh, in this country uh, in a way that our economy desperately needs right now. Um, the fact is that we have come a long way since the crisis uh, of 2008 and 2009, uh, but our economy is not growing at the pace uh, that it needs to be to create um, the, um, the number of jobs that we need to address uh, all of those who are out of work and all of those who are looking. Uh, so the President came forward with a robust proposal uh, that hits on all of the key economic challenges that we're facing today. Uh, it's a package of proposals that draws from ideas from both parties. Uh, it's, a, it's a package that is fully paid for, uh, so will not add to the deficit. Uh, and it's a package that independent experts from across the political spectrum have um, analyzed and based on their analysis suggests that the package would uh, create in upwards of a million and a half to two million new jobs. So uh, we're very focused on the need uh, to pass this bill uh, and uh, that's, uh, that's our focus today. I'll just be very, very briefly the, the core components of, uh, uh, of, this, of this act. Uh, there are four. First, uh, cutting taxes for small businesses to encourage them to hire. We know that small businesses create the majority of jobs in this country. We also know that small businesses are continuing to face the hardest time getting credit, uh, getting access to capital they need to grow. Uh, this act would provide targeted tax cuts to small businesses and particularly will reward those who hire or increase wages for employees. Second, it would provide tax, cut, tax benefits to 160 million working Americans by cutting the payroll tax cut that workers pay in half next year. That's a benefit of about $1,500 for a typical family making uh, $50,000. It's money that would go directly into families' uh, paychecks, directly into their pockets, and help them address uh, the challenges they're, they're facing, paying for gas, paying for groceries, uh, and making ends meet. We think it's critically important that Congress act um, to provide that relief and provide the certainty that that relief will be there for middle class families. Third, this package would put people back to work doing the work that we need to upgrade and modernize our country and make us more competitive in the future. Uh, it would ensure that nearly 300,000 teachers, rather than being laid off, would be in classrooms to teach our children. It would upgrade and modernize 35,000 schools. That's one-third of all public schools in this country. We know that our schools are uh, they're crumbling, and they aren't up to 21st century standards with science labs and, and internet labs uh, that our kids need to get ahead. This is a great opportunity to invest in upgrading them, which puts people back to work immediately, and also helps strengthen our long-term economic competitiveness. It would also, uh, it would also make invest, the, the act would also make investments in upgrading our roads and bridges and waterways, uh, repairing our infrastructure in ways that would make us more competitive as well. Lastly, this act would per put particular focus on helping those who have been out of work the longest uh, get back into the workforce. We have a very uh, substantial challenge with the long-term unemployed in this country, those who've been out of work for more than six months. So this act does several things uh, to target uh, helping them get back into the workforce in particular. First, it would give a $4,000 tax credit to any employer that hires someone who's out of work for at least six months. Second, it would, make it, a, um, it would make it illegal for employers to discriminate against people who are unemployed or who have been out of work. Um, and third, it would reform our unemployment insurance system to provide every opportunity for workers to get new skills, uh, get new training, and have new opportunities to connect with employers uh, to give them that shot that they need to get back into the workforce. Uh, so those are the four uh, components of the Act, tax cuts for small businesses, tax cuts for 160 million working families, investments to rebuild, modernize, uh, and uh, upgrade our country, uh, and help for the long-term unemployed. 
Again, the package is fully paid for uh, by uh, eliminating uh, a set of tax expenditures that uh, benefit the wealthy and most connected uh, in our country. Uh, and it's going to be part of a broader uh, vision that the president will out outline next week about how to make these investments in job growth up front while living within our means over the long term. Um, so that's, that's the package, and I look forward to your questions and uh, talking with you, John, about uh, how, to get this, how to get this bill enacted into law. All right. Well, if you're just joining us, you can ask questions on Twitter at WHChat, or you can go to the White House Facebook page. Let's dive right in. We have a question here. Uh, from whitehouse.gov from John McGuire. What does this bill do for the unemployed that are not in construction, teachers, police, firemen, or other government employees? What about service industry employees, IT, clerks, cashiers, etc.? And then second question, why do prevailing wage rates have to apply? Got it. So um, to the first question, uh, how does this, which, which really boils down to how does this bill help hiring overall in our economy? Uh, not just in targeted sectors. The goal of providing uh, the targeted tax relief in this bill, the tax relief that goes to businesses, uh, particularly targeted to hiring, and the tax relief to 160 million families, is focused on this idea that if we get those resources out into the hands of businesses who are looking to hire and individuals who need the, those resources to help, um, uh, to help make ends meet, that that helps provide support for our economy, particularly in the short term, uh, which filters through. If a family has more money to uh, pay their bills or to uh, buy that extra Christmas present, that helps by bolstering economic activity. It helps the retailer and that, and that, uh, that filters through into the economy. And that's why when independent analysts analyze uh, this jobs package, they show that it would have a meaningful impact on increasing overall economic growth and overall job growth, not just in targeted sectors. So, if you are a uh, if you're a small business and you're an IT firm, or you provide uh, you provide services in the healthcare industry or in the education industry, you, as a result of this bill, would get a reduction in your payroll tax uh, taxes that you pay next year. And if you are thinking about hiring or adding additional worker or paying your existing workers a little more since they've been uh, working hard without a raise for a couple of years. This bill would say, here's a real tangible incentive to do that and do that now. Uh, we think that those are the kinds of incentives that could actually get private sector uh, uh, businesses off the sidelines and give them that little, uh, little help and that little push to make the incremental investment in the new job or in the new, um, uh, in the new activity. Okay, thank you, Brian. This one's from Mary Smith. Mr. President, with the types of jobs that are being created through the American Jobs Act, will companies be willing to work with people who want to work but don't have the skills but are willing to be trained? The job market has changed so much. Many adults don't have the time to go back to school with the urgency to find a job and take care of their families. It's a great question, and you actually, um, this questioner has put her finger on one of the key challenges that we face in the labor market right now. For the first time since, uh, since the Great Depression, we have almost half of those who are out of work. So six million out of the 13 million Americans who are out of work have been out of work for at least six months. And so these are people who are struggling, looking for a job every day, but who may need an additional set of skills. They may need a new opportunity to train uh, in a workplace that they haven't had uh, a chance to do so. So one of the things that the president focused on in this legislation was how can we reform the unemployment insurance system that we have today to bring it into the 21st century and provide multiple pathways for those people who have been out of the labor force um, or who are, uh, have been looking for jobs for an extended period, give them that shot to train. So just to give you a couple of examples, there's an idea in the bill um, that's, that's called wage insurance. And what that basically means is if you uh, were working in an industry and if you're in a manufacturing job or another industry that pays, uh, uh, that paid higher wages and you are in a position where you find a job that pays less, but it may give you an opportunity to get a set of skills that you need to get back into the workforce, you would be, you would be eligible for insurance to cover part of the gap between your old salary and your new salary. 
that gives a worker a chance to take a job that um, might give them that leg up, might give them that new entry into the workforce without having to sacrifice you know, their fundamental standard of living that they and their family uh, have relied on. Uh, one other uh, quick example too is that uh, is right now, uh, in order to get unemployment insurance, you are in many states you're supposed to sit down with a counselor and have a conversation about what are the job opportunities available in your uh, in the community that you live and are your skills well designed to to uh, uh, to, to to match with uh, with those opportunities. But so many states are either not fulfilling that or don't have the resources to provide that sort of in person uh, in person support. This bill would provide support, but also provide new requirements on states that they actually sit down and give an opportunity for people who have been out of work to sit down with a counselor and say, look, here are the skills you have, here are the skills uh, that employers in your area are looking for. Let's, let's talk about what your strategy is to get new skills, or let's talk about how we could get you into one of those employers uh, to give you a chance to see what it's like to work in that environment. It's those kind of, um, it's those kind of targeted um, initiatives that we think have a real chance at breaking some of the um, negative cycles that we've seen and actually give more people opportunities mm -hmm. to get back to work. Brian, we've also gotten a lot of question about 99ers, people whose 99 weeks of unemployment insurance benefits have expired. Does a lot of what you talk about, just talked about, apply to them? Anything else you'd add from the American Jobs Act? It does, and you know we we do um, we do hear a lot about the 99ers, and it is a um, uh, it is it's a reflection of this challenge of long-term unemployment that we're facing in our economy. And again, as John just said, 99ers are those who have exhausted the full 99 weeks of uh, uh, unemployment insurance benefits that are available uh, in, most, uh, in most states and still have not been able to find a job. Those types of reforms go straight at addressing that problem and doing it in ways that we haven't tried before. Uh, I think that it reflects a commitment on the president's behalf to say this is, a, this is a real challenge in our country. We have to be creative. We have to be aggressive at taking steps um, that, we, uh, that, that we can to help solve this problem. But I would note two other things that I just mentioned briefly before. The first is the president wants to give employers every incentive possible to hire people who've been out of work and give them that shot. You know, a lot of times what I have heard or others hear is people out of work say, I just want a shot give me an opportunity to prove that I have the skills and I'm hungry. These are people who want to get back into jobs and want to have new opportunities. We want to give employers every opportunity uh, and every reason to hire people who have been out of work. So the bill would provide a $4,000 tax credit for hiring people who have been out of work at least six months. On the flip side of that, the president feels very strongly that it is not right, it's not consistent with our values as a country for employers to be explicitly discriminating against those who are unemployed. There is an, an unfortunate practice going on where some employers are explicitly saying in their want ads, the unemployed or the long-term unemployed need not apply. And so this legislation would also, um, would also make it illegal to uh, engage in that sort of explicit discrimination against uh, the unemployed and the long-term unemployed, which is another way of trying to address this problem. Okay, another question uh, from Marie China. Is the American Jobs Act going to create or promote the creation of more green jobs? Again, a, a very good question. And I think that uh, the American Jobs Act is focused and targeted on things that we can do right now to help jumpstart economic growth and jumpstart job growth. So the president, when he put this package together and worked with his team to put it together, was really focused on what are the things we can do right now. There are a, a number of uh, things in this bill that would promote the broader clean energy and energy efficiency agenda that the president believes in. Uh, first, school construction. I mentioned that this bill would provide resources to modernize 35,000 uh, public schools in this country. A lot of the opportunities in our public schools have to do with increasing the energy efficiency of the school. That's a good investment uh, both in terms of the economics of the school district. If you can reduce future energy bills, that frees up more resources to invest in teachers and, and equipment uh, and services for, for children's learning. Uh, but it's also a good investment for basic health and safety uh, because a lot of the ways in which you upgrade and green a school actually make it a healthier uh, environment for kids to learn. Uh, the, the second area is in something we haven't talked about yet, which is a proposal that the president put forward for an infrastructure bank. 
And the basic idea here is to say, rather than doing infrastructure funding, funding of construction projects in the traditional way we've done it in Washington, where it goes through simply through formula or often gets um, uh, earmarked or uh, decisions are made on a political basis, let's create an independent bank. Uh, that has independent authority to pick projects based on national and regional uh, economic significance. What's the best for our country and what's the best for jobs? One key place where that infrastructure bank would be tasked uh, to look for projects of regional significance is in clean energy infrastructure, in our energy grid, um, and also in upgrading our water systems. Uh, so there's other opportunities there as well. So uh, overall, this, this package is about creating jobs, and we think that these are targeted efforts to create jobs across the country, uh, but energy efficiency and some of these clean energy opportunities are um, good opportunities to help in that overall effort. Great. Another question along these lines of uh, how other sectors fit into the Jobs Act. Uh, Megan Baker, uh, and this has been retweeted 10 times so far uh, from Boston, how, where does national service fit into the American Jobs Act? Um, it's a, uh, again, another good question. I can understand why people re are retweeting that one. Uh, the, uh, the, the opportunity to support national service uh, is an important one, uh, and there's a couple ways in which it fits in. Uh, first, another piece that we haven't talked about yet is the Pathways Back to Work Fund. This is a component of the American Jobs Act that would invest uh, $5 billion in a set of measures uh, that we know have been successful in getting uh, young people across the country and the people who've been most disadvantaged or disconnected from the workforce back into jobs. A lot of those opportunities involve partnering with service organizations and empowering service organizations to do what they do better than anybody else, which is uh, work in their local communities and figure out creative strategies uh, to help people build skills and uh, get jobs and support their communities. So uh, through that Pathways Back to Work Fund, whether it be through helping kids find summer jobs or helping uh, disconnected adults uh, uh, build life skills so that they can position themselves for jobs, uh, partnering with national service with service organizations is going to be key, and 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 that part of the legislation would empower a lot of uh, that kind of activity. The second thing I would say is that the, this bill is situated within the uh, administration, the president's broader commitment to uh, developing a culture of service and supporting national service uh, in this country, and the importance of standing behind. Uh, groups like AmeriCorps and groups like uh, other, other service organizations across the country uh, is not only going to be fought out in the American Jobs Act, but through the uh, budget funding process, the annual budget funding process, and other uh, moments as well. And so uh, we, the President, prioritized funding for, uh, for AmeriCorps and other service organizations in his budget. There's going to be uh, a number of uh, battles over the budget this fall, and so that's another place where we'll be very focused on trying to make sure that we're maintaining our support for service organizations. Thank you, Brian. And Megan, if you're still watching, I hope you are taking a look at what is going on over at SaveService.org. I'm actually meeting with them in a half hour to talk about this broad coalition uh, to promote and protect national service. I just like to take a quick second, Brian. You're getting a lot of your questions answered here. I want to make sure everyone is aware of the incredible amount of information on the American Jobs Act that's available on WhiteHouse.gov. Uh, WhiteHouse.gov slash Jobs Act has the President's speech, it has the bill, it has fact sheets on everything from how the Jobs Act would create jobs in your specific state to different communities that you might be a part of. We need your help to understand what the American Jobs Act would do in your community. Make sure everyone in your neighborhood understands what's at stake here, and we need your help to get this bill passed. Uh, Brian, we've uh, gotten a number of uh, questions here from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. They want to know, as part of all this, will the White House support comprehensive tax reform? Well, that's, um, that's, that's an important topic as well. The President is going to be speaking more about tax reform 
uh, at the beginning of next week uh, when he talks uh, about and lays out his broader plan uh, for living within our means and addressing long-term uh, deficits. So I will leave some of the specifics to him, but generally, uh, but more generally, the answer to the question is simply yes. Uh, the president has, uh, has called for both uh, reforming both our individual tax system and our corporate tax system, uh, and doing both under the basic uh, philosophy that if we can act uh, to eliminate uh, some of the clutter, some of the tax expenditures that promote um, uh, promote uh, an industry for accountants and lobbyists uh, to help figure out help people figure out how to game the tax system, but really don't promote economic growth and don't promote job growth. If we can figure out how to remove some of those, then we can actually uh, we can actually reduce tax rates um, uh, and also reduce the deficit. And that's the basic approach uh, that the president believes in. Uh, he has talked specifically about the importance of corporate tax reform uh, to ensure that the uh, United States remains a competitive uh, place to do business and to ensure that we're providing incentives for businesses to invest and create jobs here in the United States. So I think the uh, imperative for tax reform uh, is high. Uh, the president as a part of the package to pay for this Americans Jobs Act actually identified some of those tax expenditures. I was just talking about the ones that he does not think are actually helping promote economic growth and that would be better used eliminating them uh, to pay for some of these uh, new initiatives. Uh, so, you know, uh, the subsidies that we provide to oil and gas companies right now um, are more generous than we provide to other industries. The oil and gas industry on multiple occasions over the past decade has themselves said that these subsidies actually aren't necessary for them to invest and, and, um, uh, uh, and, and do what they do. So uh, those are areas where if we make smart choices and we eliminate what we don't need, we can actually do more uh, for the country. And that's, that's part of this overall push for tax reform the president will be talking about. So Brian, it boils down to do we want to modernize our schools or do we want to keep giving oil and gas companies the subsidies even they've admitted they don't need? Well, you know, that's, that's a, the president has spoken about choices and we are at a moment where we do face a long-term deficit challenge and we do have to think seriously about the steps we're going to take to live within our means. And I think the American Jobs Act reflects those choices, as you say. Um, teachers in the classroom, science labs in our schools, versus uh, continuing to provide some of these tax benefits to oil companies, uh, to uh, investment managers. And those are choices that the president wants to start a national conversation about and wants to talk to the American people about because we believe that if we can build a strong enough coalition in favor of making some of these choices, we can do some real good for our economy right now. Excellent. Got a little bit of a skeptical question here from James okay. Doolittle. How will the funds be administered so they're not used, uh, used up by a top-heavy government and special interests before they can trickle down to those who need jobs? It's a, that's, a, that's, a very, that's a very important question, and uh, it's important that we are able to meet uh, the threshold of is this money going to be used effectively because uh, particularly at a moment where we have to make tough choices we should not be um, spending uh, government uh, money or using resources where we don't know that it will be effective. So a couple of thoughts on that. The first is providing uh, targeted tax benefits to businesses and to working families uh, is a uh, direct way to provide support. It's immediate. If the, if, if the Congress acted and passed the American Jobs Act tomorrow, then starting tomorrow, small businesses across the country would have an affirmative incentive to hire employees or give to their workers wages. If they, if they acted tomorrow, then 160 million Americans would know that they were going to get benefits in their paycheck immediately. So that's one part um, where, the, uh, where the resources go immediately. Uh, if you look at the other parts, school construction, uh, infrastructure investment, uh, I would encourage you, uh, as John said, to go on the website, look at the, some of the detailed analyses that we've put of the American Jobs Act on, read the, uh, read the bill, uh, and if you have specific questions, come back. But I think what you will see is that in each of these areas, we've taken a number of steps to try to 
break out of some of the business as usual and reform systems so that we're not uh, just, we're not doing what has sometimes happened in the past in terms of doling out money uh, based on political preferences, but instead are using rigor and merit and also building in uh, fail safe so that if the money is not being used that it comes back uh, and that people uh, have an incentive to do this and do this right. So I would encourage you to look um, and absolutely uh, take a skeptical eye and if you have questions certainly let us know because we think that um, making, the, uh, making sure that these uh, dollars are used effectively is, uh, is paramount. Okay, uh, we're still looking for more questions. Uh, if you have any, go to Twitter, uh, let us know at WHChat, uh, also on the White House Facebook page. Uh, got another question here. I know the President talked about in his speech what he could do without congressional approval. Harriet Seller wants to know exactly that. What kind of jobs can the President create uh, with, without congressional approval? Sure, uh, another good question, and I'll just give you two quick examples. Yesterday, the President announced that he was instructing uh, government agencies to accelerate the pace at which they pay contracts to small businesses. So the government is a very large purchaser of goods and services across the country and interacts with, um, with tens of thousands of small businesses. Over, uh, over a year, the government pays out $100 billion uh, in contract payments to small businesses who are providing services and uh, goods across the country. When those payments aren't made on time, or when it takes too long for that, those payments to get to small businesses, it puts them at a disadvantage. It makes it harder for them to meet their own payroll. It makes it harder for them to contemplate making a new investment. So what the president did was he sat down with his chief performance officer and said, um, how fast can we do this? How, how can we do this better? Uh, they came up with a plan, and as of yesterday, he announced that we were going to cut in half the amount of time that uh, the, that government agencies have to pay uh, small businesses. That's a tangible step that'll put more money in the pockets of small business owners so they can do um, uh, what they see uh, fit with it and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll hire and make investments to grow. Uh, another example is uh, one that the president mentioned in his speech, which is uh, his team right now is working with the federal housing agencies to try to eliminate some of the barriers that are standing in the way of homeowners refinancing their mortgages at lower interest rates. So right now, interest rates are at historic lows, just over 4%. Uh, a lot of homeowners have interest rates from earlier periods that are 6, 7, uh, 8%. If they have an opportunity to refinance, that's real money in their pocket. If you, if, you, uh, if you reduce your interest rate by a percentage point, that could be $2,000 a year in lower mortgage payments. Uh, there are a number of barriers uh, that are standing in the way of borrowers who have been responsible and who've made their payments through this entire crisis that are standing in the way of allowing them to refinance at lower rates. We're working on trying to eliminate some of those, which would again expand the number of people who could get access to those lower rates. That puts money in the pockets of families, something that hopefully uh, we can act on right away. Okay, Brian, well, we've got a question here I'm going to take a crack at All from right. Texas 88, David Story via Twitter. He says, what is the strategy for gaining Republican support in the House? Uh, well, David, I'll tell you, the day after the president gave his speech to a joint session of Congress, he was in Virginia. Uh, you can look it up on a map. That was Eric Cantor's district. The next week, that Monday, he was in Ohio, Speaker Boehner's backyard. He's been to North Carolina. He has had people here at the White House who would benefit from the American Jobs Act. The president is going to be demanding that Congress pass the American Jobs Act now. He sent the bill up to Congress. He is going to push on this until action is taken. I don't think anyone would doubt that the number one priority for Americans across this country is creating jobs. But what will really make this happen is all of you who are watching, understanding what the American Jobs Act would do in your community, explaining it to your neighbors, and creating a, a, a wide range and a broad coalition behind this. We really ask, find that school in your neighborhood that you know could be modernized, would get children in a safer, cleaner, modernized classroom while putting people back to work. You all know that nonprofit organization or small business that if they receive that payroll tax cut would put people back to work. We need your help, um, all of you watching today, all of you who are, who are across the country, Find out more about the American Jobs Act, let people know about it, and we will build this coalition together. Um, let's uh, move on to, uh, uh, from uh, 
uh, Don Storch uh, via WhiteHouse.gov, is the American Jobs Act a uh, tax increase for all Americans? Uh, no. The, Ameri the American Jobs Act would provide a tax relief to uh, 160 million uh, working Americans. Every, every American who receives a paycheck and pays payroll taxes uh, would actually see their taxes reduced next year. Uh, the way that we pay for the American Jobs Act uh, without increasing the deficit is to reduce a targeted set of tax expenditures uh, that go to uh, the 2% of Americans uh, that uh, make more than $250,000 a year, uh, as well as uh, oil com the oil and gas industry, uh, investment managers who currently uh, pay lower tax rates on their, uh, on their labor income than, uh, than typical middle class families do, and the purchasers of corporate jets so uh, who currently receive a disproportionate tax benefit compared to uh, airlines when they purchase, uh, uh, when they purchase uh, airplanes. So the tax expenditures that are reduced uh, to, to offset this bill uh, are targeted at those uh, where we think that they aren't really adding a lot of economic value uh, right now. And again, if you redirect those resources, we could actually afford to provide 160 million working Americans a tax cut. So, um, so short answer, no. Um, and in fact, if you are uh, one of those people who's out there getting a paycheck, uh, odds are that your taxes will be lower next year uh, if Congress acts and passes this bill. Brian, we've got a couple questions uh, asking a little bit more about what this plan does for education. Would you mind just summarizing again the direct investments in our uh, public schools that sure. are included as part of this? Sure, absolutely. So first, uh, the, the bill targets what is a growing problem of layoffs of teachers and educators at the state and local level. Uh, we've seen a disturbing increase uh, in the number of uh, layoffs that have happened as a result of uh, state and local budget crunches uh, that are forcing um, uh, increases in class sizes, redu reductions in the class uh, in the school week in, in some instances. What this bill would do is it would provide targeted support uh, to uh, keep nearly 300,000 teachers uh, from being laid off and instead keep them in the classroom uh, teaching our children. That's an incredibly important near-term step to make sure that we're not um, uh, we're not actually taking a step backward. Second, the bill would provide $30 billion to invest in rebuilding our public schools uh, and our community colleges. And that is something that we can put people to work immediately doing, but it has a, a more long-term uh, impact for our economy. Because again, as we were talking about before, if you can take a school and transform it from uh, a, a building that's crumbling and a building that is not serving the kids or the community that it's in uh, well to one that has um, new uh, science facilities, uh, new computer labs. We really give the children who learn in that school and the community that rely on that uh, school an opportunity to, uh, to learn better and be more effective for several years in the future. So that's, a, that's more of a, a long-term benefit that could put people to work uh, right now. Okay, we have an anonymous question here. Okay. Um, I'm a small business owner. I have three employees, including myself. Will the tax cuts in the job bill pertain to such a business as mine? I think a good opportunity to explain a little more who this small business uh, tax cut is aimed at. Sure, sure. Uh, I would need to. I, I won't speak to the exact specifics of that uh, of that business because it does. If they are structured where they are paying their employees uh, uh, in the conventional way that a business would, then the short answer is yes. I'll assume that that's the case. Um, if the 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 small business, there are two small business tax cuts in this that uh, that folks who either work for small business or who run them should be aware of. The first is it would cut in half the payroll taxes that employers pay on behalf of their employees. So right now, if you're an employer, if you're that small business owner and you have three employees, you pay 6.2% of your employee's salary on behalf of them in payroll taxes. Next year, that would be reduced to 3.1, so it'd be cut in half. So as, a first, uh, for, as an initial matter, you would get that tax benefit next year um, if you have employees and you pay that payroll tax. Second, you would not pay any payroll taxes at all on any increases in your payroll. So if you add a new person, if you go from those three employees, you add a fourth employee. You would not pay any payroll taxes on that person's salary. Uh, if you 
increase the wages of those three employees and you pay them all a little more than you did last year, you won't pay any payroll taxes on those increases. And that's really designed to give that employer that you just referenced, the anonymous employer, um, if, if he or she was thinking about expanding and adding one or two employees but is, is trying to make the decision whether or not to do it, this provides them with a, a concrete tax benefit if they move and they do it now. That would be good for them, but it would also be good for the economy overall. Okay. Uh, Brian, one uh, program I think I'd like to ask you to talk a little bit more about is Project Rebuild. Sure. have got a number of questions uh, asking for more information, for instance, on uh, the 99ers. I think this is one area that's really targeted at those communities that have been the hardest hit. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Sure. So Project Rebuild is based on a simple premise. The foreclosure crisis in this country has um, has had long-lasting negative effects on communities across the country, but in particular, in communities where there's concentrated levels of foreclosure, it's had the most profound effect. And, and there are communities, and from Cleveland to Detroit to across this country, where you have um, lots of vacant properties, and we have a, a real negative cycle where vacant properties are weighing down on home values, the depressed home values are depressing new investment, which weighs down on home values, which depresses new investment, and, and communities get caught up in this cycle. So in those communities, you have, this basic, you have this basic problem. You have vacant properties, and you have people who have been out of work, many who've been out of work for a long time. If we could connect those two together, and we could put people to work, fixing those properties, repurposing, rehabilitating them, and in some cases, demolishing them and creating green space that would, uh, that would not drag down uh, the economic vitality of a community. If we, could, if we could do that, we would not only help repair those communities, but we would help regional economies and we would help um, spur uh, economic recovery. So Project Rebuild is just based on that simple premise. Let's target the communities where the foreclosure crisis has been the most intense, and let's provide resources to put people back to work, particularly those who've been out of work for a long time, rebuilding homes, rehabilitating uh, empty office buildings, uh, figuring out creative economic development strategies for those regions to help address the foreclosure crisis and help get people back to work. Excellent. Brian, uh, before we go, I'd like to ask, um, you know, when I look at the American Jobs Act, I can just imagine people in their community looking at that school that could be modernized and really helping connect this for people. Do you have a, a favorite part of the American Jobs Act or that part that you think is most clear for people what it could be doing in their community and how they can explain it to their neighbors, their friends, their coworkers? Well, I, I, I think that there is, uh, I, I guess I would, I would say, I would use license to, to, to pick two. Perfect. The first, uh, the first is the extension of the payroll tax cut uh, for people who work for working Americans. I think this is, is, a, is a common sense notion, but it's very important. What a lot of people have felt um, uh, this year is that we keep getting hit with a bunch of, uh, of headwinds. So gas prices went up more than people expected. That's come straight out of people's paychecks. Food prices are up, and people notice that at the grocery store, that they are, they're, they're having to spend more dollars for the same food to, uh, to, to, to help uh, feed their families. Um, all of those pressures weigh on families, uh, and we have the ability to address that. There is a 2% payroll tax cut that's in law right now. Uh, if Congress doesn't act, that will go away and people's paychecks will go down for the typical family by about $1,000 next year. That is a self-inflicted wound on the economy that we just can't afford right now. And you know, I think for most families out there, they would agree that right now is not a moment to you know, have it pull their paycheck back by $1,000. The President's plan would not only avoid that, but it would put an extra $500 in people's pockets. I think that that makes a lot of sense at the individual household level, and it happens to be good national economic policy as well. The second one I would mention is just Project Rebuild that we just talked about. The foreclosure crisis has hit the nation as a whole, but it's hit individual communities like this so hard. And it's just, it is inexcusable when we look around and we see people out of work, homes that need rebuilding, and communities that need repair. That's a solvable problem. That's something that we could do something about right now. We know how to do it. Um, we can use those dollars effectively. And if we pass this bill, it would make a material difference in thousands of communities like that across the country. And I think 
everybody has had some experience with the foreclosure crisis. And everybody knows that it's not just about your own home. If you have a foreclosed property on your block, that's dragging down your own home value. That's making your home less valuable. And so it's in everybody's interest uh, to put something like that in place. So I used my license, I went overboard, but I'm, I, as you may be able to tell, I am excited about the American Jobs All Act. Right. So. Well, thank you, Brian. And I just wanna close with and ask for your help. Please go to whitehouse.gov, take the time to learn all about the American Jobs Act. Every blog post you do, every tweet you do, every neighbor you stop on the street corner and talk to them about this will build the coalition that we need to get this done. We've gotten many questions about specific communities um, from people who have been out of work in very difficult situation for, situation for two years or more to specific parts of the country. This is a program that will make a difference in every corner in this country. We need your help to make it happen. Thanks so much, everyone.